Activists in Palm Beach Gardens fighting to save nearly 700 acres of unprotected, unprotected forest. South Florida, where development is so rampant and the last wild spaces are being destroyed without question extremely quickly for shopping malls and homes and increasing population. Every single day that construction's happening, we are losing acres and acres of endangered species habitat in the Brigger Forest. The science fiction of, of biotechnology uh, that kind of dangled this carrot out in front of, of people's faces. And you know, it's just like David and Goliath, you know, the, the hits, like how do these tiny people who care so much go up against something so big? The reason why our society has these types of illnesses is because we destroy land and water and natural plants and air. You know, so I think keep on going down the line to like, oh, let's get more technology and more technology and more technology and that's going to save us. No, that's the thing that's doing us in. The history of Scripps in Florida begins in 2004 when Jeb Bush and Palm Beach County commissioners rolled out the red carpet to a scandal-ridden biotechnology company based out of La Jolla, California. Environmental activists were told the plan was an unstoppable train. The reason we were up against, I think, such a massive fight was this was com you know, coming not just from the politicians in Tallahassee, you know, straight from the governor's office originally, but uh, from like the international push to put a lot of humanity's eggs in the basket of biotechnology. This train is a company founded by a president exposed for colluding with tobacco companies to skew science, which were cited for multiple counts of animal cruelty and who own patents for genetically splicing drugs with food crops. They were trying to place it on a site that was Mecca Farms, which is a citrus grove. You know, they were calling it a biotech city because they were going to have, you know, apartment complexes and shopping centers and, and all the research things. It was just like, hey, we would rather have orange farms. We would rather have, you know, marshes, which, you know, purifies the water, things that purify the air, things that create natural and healthy food instead of pavement and these research facilities that, you know, they're doing animal testing, they're doing all kinds of weird things, and it's gonna be this huge boom for the economy and biotechnology is the new industry. We got word that the governor, Jeb Bush at the time, who had signed this deal um, and was pushing it on us, was coming to meet with um, the board of Scripps, the board of trustees of Scripps, um, like that morning <laughs> at the Palm Beach Breakers Hotel. And so we we're like, what can we do? Like, we need to go there, you know? So we um, dressed up in our finest. And we, you know, took off our, our tops where we had our messages written out, which said nature, yes, biotech now on the other side. And we prepared like a small radical cheer. <laughs> and so we were able to perform that um, several times and it got the attention of everybody in the restaurant. It wasn't because the Water Management District stood against it. Uh, it took a federal lawsuit, you know, and a federal judge to pull the plug on that. County did decide not to move forward on that um, site, but then that's when they made the decision to go to Palm Beach Gardens and to the Brigger Tract. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful and it's just like, you know, a nice breath of fresh air next to 95, like, 
when the sun glistens through the pine trees or the cell palmetto. You shall find a way around or through it when nothing within us stays rigid. Though you're within the confines of a megalopolis, we're in the middle of this giant city from Miami all the way up to Jupiter. Um, but when you go into the Brigger Forest, all that sound goes away. Be shapeless, formless, like water. It can flow or it can crack. Magic of slash pines, taking the moments of smelling them. Slash pines have a slight hint of chocolate. Adult trees provide enough oxygen for an entire family of four in a year, which is really, really important. So every two trees we cut down means a family of four is deprived of that clean oxygen. The gopher tortoise holes provide habitat for like 300 and something different species that are living in these holes. So it's like the biodiversity and the ecosystem in there is no doubt special and unique and magical. You shall find a way around or through it. The eastern indigo snake and the gopher tortoise and the hand fern, these are not species that are doing great right now. The Brigger Forest is within the feeding area of a wood stork rookery. It's important habitat for wood storks to forage from. I don't think a lot of people realize that um, organisms that move around on legs can't find mates to reproduce with because if they're just trapped in this one little small area, then they only have this amount of numbers that there are and they're already very, very few. If there's only two bobcats in an area, they could reproduce, but if there only comes down to one, then there's the end of that population of bobcats. So this is the Brigger Forest. You can see that it's already been encroached upon by development on all sides. Either housing, it's bisected by a highway, uh, neighbored by the Florida Turnpike, but still the Brigger Forest is the largest intact pine flatwoods in the eastern portion of 95, all the way south to Miami. One of the species that's endangered in the Brigger Forest is the hanfern. It is a state-listed species, so that means that it doesn't have the protections that federally listed species have. The Brigger Forest, with the amount of hanfern colonies that it has, has possibly up to 2% of the national amount of hanferns in just that forest alone. It's not like you're choosing an old Walmart parking lot to make you kind of like transition that. You're like taking the one little bit of habitat that's left in that area and paving that over. The development itself requires a lot more resources and the materials they use are destructive. The runoff is often toxic and that gets into our waterways. That causes its own issues. So just having that extra development causes more issues and the forest, which is what would clean and correct the problems that we create, is now destroyed. So you're really, really just adding insult to injury. On top of the Save the Burger campaign being forest defense, another part of it is animal liberation. There is already 
a animal testing facility on the FAU campus called Scripps. They want to expand and have another facility on what is now the Brigger Forest. So a part of stopping deforestation, it's also a plan to just prevent more animal testing. Richard Lerner is famous for an experiment where he forced cats to walk on a treadmill for 22 hours. Each time they fell asleep, they would be shocked into consciousness by water. Scripps' main research facility has hosted testing on dogs, cats, mice, flies, rabbits, rats, primates, and other undisclosed species. If Scripps is able to expand phase two, it is highly expected that they would test on primates at that facility. Worldwide Primates, a primate dealer and breeder based in South Florida, known for animal cruelty, would more than likely be the suppliers to Scripps. During the deals made for Scripps, Governor Jeb Bush signed into law exemption from Sunshine State Public Records. So to this day, it is not fully public what they are doing in the FAU facility, nor can anyone legally find out. Scripps is, uh, I think they're clever. <laughs> I think that they've really utilized uh, the paradigm of uh, scientific progress to, uh, to capitalize, and they've done a good job of it, but I'm... I'm very much against uh, very much against the sacrifices that they've made in order to accumulate that that capital. This is a very difficult fight. Protecting the Brigger Forest, we're fighting against giant corporations. Some of them are multinational. They are being funded by the state of Florida um, as part of an uh, an attempt to like bolster the entire economy of Florida. And we're like a ragtag group of anarchists trying to stand up against that. This is the community's jewel, and it's exciting today to see everybody come together after, you know, what has been literally more than a decade worth of work to finally turn the ground to build that state-of-the-art facility. Uh, we're, we're starting now, and we're not going to be stopped. We got out there and, you know, saw uh, the wetlands that were there and these uh, incredible um, you know, intact slash pine forests that, that are really rare east of I-95. By 2009, uh, you know, we were having semi-regular campouts, you know, where we weren't afraid to have campfires and, um, you know, enjoying the place that, um, you know, that we were all anticipating could be, could be wiped out. You know, it felt like any day at that point. You know, we began uh, collecting data and research pretty early on, and then it, it got uh, more more formal as it as it went. And we did a, a series of, of trips that were dedicated to um, you know taking GPS points and photo documenting the species we were finding. By 2010, we put together a document uh, in anticipation of a series of public hearings at Palm Beach Gardens City Commission, and then also for a um, permit challenge to the South Florida Water Management District. You know, we, we wanted to be armed with GPS points and photos, uh, proving that we were, what we were seeing was that uh, there was a lot more out there than the professional consultants had put on, on record. Unfortunately, uh, every argument that we made was thrown out with some sort of technicality, and um, you know, they ended up uh, approving the environmental resource permit despite the evidence and information that we presented. Hey everyone, welcome to the Brigger Forest tree sit, quite possibly the first tree sit in South Florida. This is a look at a man and a woman who are camped in a tree in Palm Beach Gardens. They are protesting a new development there. Boy, that protest has caught the eye of many drivers wondering why these folks are living like Tarzan and Jane. 
first three days of the action were incredibly intense. Um, very little sleep. I didn't eat much, I didn't drink much. I was just focused on the campaign, very heightened and aware um, to the fact that cops were coming in and out or coming up to the site and out to the site. And conscious of the understanding that at any moment we could be ambushed. So it's, it's intense, but that's the reality of a direct action. This is one of the last large forests that we have in Palm Beach County, and it's, um, it's due to be bulldozed to turn into more urban sprawl and a biotech city. Um, and we don't want that. We want biodiversity, not biotech. We want um, healthy habitats and not more urban sprawl. Here, here's water. Having to like sneak through enemy lines to, to deliver gear or getting lost and torn up in the soft palmetto, uh, coming out like battered and, and, and bloody and you know, it's like sitting for hours waiting for law enforcement vehicles to, to move so we could get in or out. And you know, I remember this, some instances of Jedi mind tricks with law enforcement in the area. <laughs> Protesters living in a tree stand for more than a month, forced down by police and locked up behind bars. If you're arresting people for climbing trees, are you going to arrest the people who are cutting the trees? So although it garnered a lot of public attention, media attention, raised awareness on the issue. After six weeks, the trees that we were occupying in three different locations were cut down. It, we didn't get the results that we were looking for. So we'll keep on fighting. to see the rest of this forest go. It would be a crime. After the tree sit, we did a lot of legal work. Before the tree sit, there was an administrative challenge against South Florida Water Management District. Many administrative challenges have happened against their permits for development of the rigor since then. I've lived in Palm Beach County almost 20 years and watched in dismay the development spring up in Palm Beach County and Jupiter. I think it's enough. A pine forest. We are going to see its destruction. You will be passing a resolution that ensures its destruction. And we will have another Starbucks, another mall, another air-conditioned space at the cost of the wild. This property has always been zoned for development and has never been slated for preservation. If you want good preservation lane call out to the locks at G Sloot. That is where preservation belongs, not in a property that's run right through the middle by I-95. In fact, in 1990, Palm Beach County's Environmental Resources Management selected the Brigger Forest as a candidate for preservation through a bond to purchase land for protection. At that time, it was called Indian Creek Flatwoods Ecosite Number 23. While it was not selected in the final purchases, it was already recognized as endangered species habitat 25 years ago.
In 2013, Palm Beach County Environmental Coalition, South Florida Wildlands, the Loxahatchee Sierra Club, we filed a notice of intent to sue Fish and Wildlife Service because they were violating the Endangered Species Act. We informed the current investors culture group that we were going to sue. During that process, they committed to not doing development. So that tactic at that moment did stall construction at least a few months. Lawsuits are incredibly expensive. We were not able to go through with the challenge because we didn't have enough finances. Unfortunately, really the people who have power, um, our local elected officials, may be making money off of this or don't care or think for whatever reason that having more businesses in the area is better than having nature. These companies that are putting and building their houses, uh, development, the strip mall up there, um, they're making a lot of money off of this. So really, I believe it has to do with money and power, like most terrible things that happen on Earth. We did a lot of research and we focused on Coulter, which is a real estate agency, development agency that, that is in charge of knocking down the forest. They bought the forest. The opportunity for Coulter to be able to purchase such a beautiful piece of property and built out all the way around it. So it's truly an infill site. Typically infill sites are two acres, three acres, five acres, 10 acres. 10 acres is a large infill site. This is a 626 acre infill site, a piece of property that has never been on the market. The same family owned it from 1952 until we purchased it from them a couple of years ago. And it is truly an infill site. So we started focusing not only at going to the Coulter offices once a week and just standing outside with pots and pans and fireworks and megaphones and noisemakers and, and trombones and trying to make as much noise and being as annoying as possible and put pressure on the people who work there to quit and on the higher ups to do the right thing. There's so little remaining. We're talking a lot of migratory bird species habitat. We're talking uh, raptor habitat. Some folks uh, decided to do an action where, they're, uh, where they would get inside of the Coulter offices, lock their necks together, um, refuse to leave, and bring attention to, the, uh, to Coulter's practices and Coulter's plans. A common tactic of animal rights campaigns in the past has been to basically say, if you're gonna keep doing this, we're gonna keep doing this. And so we were at their offices, sometimes we went to the homes of executives who worked at Coulter, and were very loud to let their neighbors know, let their families know that they are murderers, they are part of the problem, they are destroying habitat that will never come back. In 2015, activists learned that destruction had started. I remember thinking that I did not like how developed West Palm Beach was. And then the first time I drove north on 95, I saw that beautiful forest and it really gave me this feeling of joy and peace. And then several years later to drive by again and see just dirt and machines and destruction has been very depressing. And yeah, it's just really hard to watch it go piece by piece. One time that I'll never forget in the forest, I saw a bobcat running, which was pretty much the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Um, a few weeks later, a bobcat had been hit by a car because they'd been destroying the forest and had been running away from bulldozers. And I, I don't know, part of me feels like it was the same cat. 
we're having really poor drainage. And if they take out this forest, basically what we're gonna left with is more concrete, more asphalt, and nowhere for this water to go. They're gonna try to build these retention ponds, but when they get these floods, uh, which they're gonna start getting more and more often now, the water is gonna have to go into the street or surrounding businesses, surrounding houses. It's really dangerous. It's really not forward thinking. They're not really planning on what's gonna happen. We need to look further into the future. What happens when we've destroyed all of our resources? That's the bigger problem. When you clear cut a forest, when you drain a wetland, when you um, burn off a savanna or grassland area, you automatically expose the ground to incoming solar radiation and the area immediately heats up and dries out. It becomes windier. The soil erodes, which enhances the heating, the drying, and the, and the increased um, wind velocities. So before there is any carbon emissions in the atmosphere, land use conversions have a direct and immediate and very negative impact on local and regional and ultimately global climate stability. This property belongs to the land itself and the trees and the animals and the plants. This ecosystem is its own. All of us have the right to kill this ecosystem. Everything legal that was done, uh, that could have been done, was done, that I see it. Uh, the only thing left was to actually try to stop them in their tracks, you know, by direct action. Three protesters accused of blocking construction in Palm Beach Gardens a year ago appeared before a judge this morning. A rally was held outside the Palm Beach County Courthouse to support efforts to preserve the Brigger Forest. Last year, members of Everglades Earth First locked themselves to a disabled van on Hood Road. They said they were trying to keep construction equipment from reaching the forest, where Scripps Research Institute was trying to expand. We took a PVC pipe and um, basically, we chained ourselves together in the pipe that was locked to a corner of the van through the windows. And that prevented the police from extracting us uh, as soon as they got there. I blockaded that road so that the animals in the forest could have more time so that we could have more time to try all kinds of different avenues to stop them from cutting it down. I was found guilty. Um, we each got a year's probation uh, and fines and community service. Through, you know, lawsuits, through trying to do direct action and take the legal route, you know, afterwards of getting arrested. None of that worked. And that's left me feeling like it's it's all not enough. Well, one thing about the fight to save the Brigger Forest that um, I wish we'd been more successful at is rallying community support. Um, that was not for a lack of trying. Folks went door knocking in the community. Some door to door, just putting those little flyers in people's uh, windows or doors fundraisers at a store in the community, trying to get people involved. Unfortunately, we just had to face the hard truth that most rich people don't give a shit about the environment. As a house painter, my job that I just got, my boss called me and said, hey, all right, here's the address. See you in the morning at 9 a.m. And I was like, wait, what's the address? And she's like, you know, Alton. And I was like, I can't come. Like, I can't go there. You know, she would be like, well, I have to make money. And I'm like, yeah, but some somewhere on the line, someone has to say no in order for things to change. It takes a lot to stop a forest from getting cut down. And unfortunately, a lot of the rigor was cut down. Every time with this 
with this campaign, as much as I dreaded it, or I'd be like, oh God, I don't want to do this. What if no one shows up? Like da 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 da. It was always special and it was always magical and it was always fun. How many times I've just been like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like no one's listening. And then having to hold the space to like, you know, just be the person to hold the space for people to show up and like cry out for this forest that no one's listening to. I think we live in a world where we just want to do what's easier. Um, we do, of course, make selfish decisions. We all do, I do, all the time. Um, but especially as a teacher, I really, really try to tell my students that even if it's not popular, and probably if you're doing the right thing, it's not going to be popular, but you should really, really, truly stand up for what you believe in and what you believe to be is right. And this is happening all over the state of Florida. This is happening all over the continent. This is happening all over the world. We've got to stop this. Every green space is precious to climate stability. Every forest, every remaining wetlands, every grassland. As a matter of fact, instead of removing them and turning them into commercial and industrial and residential developments, we need to be employing people to restore them. We need to be restoring and rewilding as many of these places as possible. If we don't continue to protect endangered species habitat, we won't have any species to protect anymore, including ourselves. It's been hard. We still haven't won yet. We still have to fight and go up against massive, wealthy developers. And all of us have to keep doing that. It's gonna take everybody here in Florida to stop the absolutely out of control development that's happening here. But we have to, it's not an option anymore. There's a magic in the air that I feel when I am there. It plays straight for my heart and it lays it all bare. It's in the cry of an eagle and the deer so meek and mild. It's in the rise of a mountain, let it stay forever wild, forever wild, forever wild, let it stay forever wild. It's in all that is not tame, and some that can't be named. It's in the fog down in the valley. It's in the scent of summer rain. It's in the scream of a lion when she's sounding like a child. 
It's in the song of a river. Let it stay forever wild. Forever wild. Forever wild. Let it stay forever wild. Now there are those of our own kind. They're running fast and going blind. And the only thing they worship is their God, the dollar sign. Well, we must fight them with our spirit, with our might and with our guile. We must show them that the answer is to stay forever wild, forever wild, forever wild. Let it stay forever wild.